Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. This exam paper you may have seen before. It is actually from 0455, IGCSE Level Economics. This paper is from May June 2020, and you get 2 hours 15 minutes to complete it. You can find a link in the description below to download the question paper. So we should take advantage of this time and, let's get into it. Hi guys! Today we will solve the 0455 IGCSE economics paper. We will be working on paper 2. This paper is from 2020, and is downloadable in the link below. Opening the paper, we come to section A, question 1. This question you must do. The first part is data about a certain situation, in this case, some problems affecting the Greek economy. They have given us some tables to find some data from, and some text detailing the situation. Excellent, they have given us all the information. We just have to find it. Okay, let's start. Question 1A. This is to calculate the total number of people over 60 years old in Greece in 2015. Looking at the table, we can see that the population is 10.8 million, and 27% of these are over 60 years old. That means it is a straight-up calculation. 27% of 10.8 million equals 2.92 million. Next, question 1b. Explain what is meant by an unemployment rate of 24%. Okay, they want a definition. 24% of the total labor force is actively searching for jobs but cannot find it. These people are willing and able to work. Next, question 1c. Identify two reasons for the recovery of the European economies, other than Greece. Okay, they want us to find something. In the second paragraph, they tell us two reasons why. Lifting the answers straight from the text, successful supply-side policy measures, and the improving global economy. Moving on, question 1D. Explain the two supply-side policy measures being used by the Greek government. Okay, they want us to find something and then explain it. In the second paragraph again, they tell us two things. So, labor market reforms, making it easier to hire and fire workers and giving workers more skills to enable them to take various jobs. Also, making it easier for workers to move from one place to another or one job to another. Secondly, privatization, increasing efficiency due to the profit-maximizing motive. Next, question 1e. Analyze how two of Greece's population trends may have affected its economy. Okay, they want us to find something and then explain the outcome of this. In the third paragraph, they mention three things, and we only need to talk about two. The Greek population has been falling ever since 2010 resulting in a smaller labor force. Secondly, an aging population which would cause an increase in dependency ratio. Thirdly, emigration, which would result in the loss of skilled workers. Next, question 1F. Analyze the relationship between Greece's GDP per head and its HDI value. Okay, they want us to explain the outcome of the relationship between these two variables. Greece's GDP per head has been falling from 2010 and 2015 but HDI has been increasing. This suggests a negative relationship between the data for GDP per head and the data for HDI value. This could be because of improving education and healthcare, or other reasons. HDI consists of GDP per head, education, and health. Hence even though GDP per head is falling this is more than offset by rising education and health. Now, question 1G. Discuss whether or not having a strong foreign exchange rate is a problem for Greece's economy. Discuss means that we have to mention both the positives and negatives around a strong foreign exchange rate. So, why it might be a problem? A strong foreign exchange rate will lead to a high price of exports. This decreases the quantity demanded of exports, decreasing the value of these exports. A strong foreign exchange rate will lead to the low price of imports. This may increase the quantity demanded for imports, increasing the value of these imports. This may decrease net exports. This may decrease the total demand. This could end up decreasing economic growth and decreasing employment. 
The other side of the argument is, a strong foreign exchange rate will lead to the low price of imported raw materials, machines and capital, or semi-manufactured goods. This could decrease the cost of production, decreasing the price of domestically produced goods. This may increase demand, consumption, and exports. This could increase total demand, increasing economic growth, and increasing employment. Now, question 1H. Discuss whether or not a market economic system improves living standards. Again, discuss means that we have to mention both the positives and negatives around a market economic system. Firstly, the positives, starting with economic freedom. Consumers and producers can make their own decisions on what to consume and produce. No government intervention enables a more efficient allocation of resources. Firms react to the wants of consumers to gain profits for themselves then consumers are fairly likely to get what they want and gain high levels of satisfaction from their income. Also, costs are lower and prices are lower, and thus, are more affordable. The other side of the argument is instability and uncertainty. Unemployment, especially when there is a recession, high inflation could decrease affordability, and monopolies exploit consumers. Also, workers may be paid low wages. There can be pollution and other external costs. Other problems could be unequal distribution of income and wealth, and under-provisioning of public goods. Moving on, Section B. You only have to do three out of four of these questions. Do not do more than three. Moving on, Section B. You only have to do three out of four of these questions. Do not do more than three. Let's start. Question 2A. State two functions of local government. I can state a lot more than just two. But from this list, all you have to do is choose two. Providing public goods. Providing street lights. Local recreation activities. Waste collection and management. Infrastructure investment. Providing tax incentives. Owning. Provision of low-income housing. Supporting local businesses. Next, question 2B. Explain how a lower cost of living can encourage population growth. What the examiner is after here is why. So you need to explain why a lower cost of living will encourage this. A lower cost of living would mean it is cheaper to bring up a child. Both education and healthcare costs will be lower. Parents don't have to work so hard giving them more time to raise children. A lower cost of living could lower the death rate, as healthcare is more affordable. People can live longer. A lower cost of living could encourage net migration because it is cheaper to live in that country. Okay, now, question 2C. Analyze the influences on the mobility of two factors of production. What the examiner is after here. Well, how does mobility affect factors of production? They are only after two factors of production from capital, enterprise, land, and labor. Mobility would mean the availability of proper infrastructure to move from place to place. For example, trains and roads, and whether it is affordable or not. Cost of living differences might mean whether workers can afford to move to another place. For example, housing costs and cost of education for this labor. Also, we could mention the availability of information on jobs elsewhere. Another issue is tax rate changes. Lower tax rates could encourage workers to move to another country to take advantage of lower taxes. Entrepreneurs could also be encouraged to move to a lower tax economy. Regulation changes could limit the movement of labor or capital. The level of education could make labor more occupationally mobile. Okay, now, question 2D. Discuss whether or not increased investment is beneficial to an economy. Remember, this means a reasoned discussion that accurately examines both sides of the economic argument, making use of economic information and clear and logical analysis to evaluate economic issues and situations. So, firstly, why it might be beneficial. Investment is the purchasing of capital goods that increase a country's productive capacity or supply-side capacity of the economy. Investment also increases total demand. Investment increases demand for workers, decreases unemployment, and increases income. It could increase spending on research and development and increase productivity. It may create economic growth. Why it might not be beneficial. Investments may lead to demand pull inflation in the short run. Investments on capital goods has an opportunity cost of consumer goods production. Investments sacrifices current living standards for future living standards. Foreign investments might be very uncertain 
because it knows no loyalty, and thus can be very mobile. Capital goods may be a substitute for labor, which increases unemployment. Next question, 3A. State 2 benefits of free trade. I can certainly name more than two benefits. So, any two from the following list. Increased choices, more competition, lower prices, more specialization. Now, 3B, explain two reasons why governments levy taxes. Now, remember explain mean we have to explain why. Taxes are levied to be able to fund government spending and the types of government spending that might improve standards of living. Secondly, to be able to control inflation, through fiscal policy, and reducing total demand. Thirdly, to reduce inequality, by taxing the rich and help the poor. Also, to discourage the consumption of demerit goods, and improve the allocation of resources, and reduce the external cost to change external costs to private costs. For instance, to reduce pollution. Finally, to reduce imports and to protect home producers. Next, 3C. Analyze, using a production possibility curve diagram, the impact of higher labor productivity on an economy. You will get one mark for each of these things. Axis correctly drawn. Initial curve or line sloping downward drawn to the axis. New curve or line sloping downward drawn to the axis. Shift to the right indicated by arrow or lettering. And, a couple more marks for your analyze. Higher labor productivity will increase output per worker. This will increase productive capacity. Lastly for question 3, part D. Discuss whether or not MNCs always benefit their host countries. Remember, you need to mention both sides of the argument. So, why they might bring in more investment, increase total demand and economic growth, provide more employment opportunities, bring in more foreign capital and more advanced machinery. And now, why they might not. MNCs might exploit local workers, pay low wages and provide low quality working environments. Most profits of MNCs not reinvested back into the domestic economy but brought back to home country. Big MNCs may meddle with domestic policy making. Next question, time for 4A. Define profit maximization. Okay, straight up definition here. When a firm produces at the level of output which makes the highest profits for the firm. Or, when a firm produces where the gap between total revenue and total cost is largest. Now, 4B, explain two types of mergers. Horizontal. When two or more firms from the same industry and the same stage of production merge. Vertical. When two or more firms from the same industry but at different stages of production merge. Conglomerate. When two or more firms from different industries merge. Next, 4C, analyze how fiscal policy can encourage firms to produce more. In this case, the examiner is after the outcomes of fiscal policy. Fiscal policies being taxes and government spending. Reducing corporation tax could lead to more profits after tax enabling firms to invest more and expand. Reducing income tax could increase spending, raising total demand encouraging firms to produce more. Increasing government spending, such as increasing subsidies, could lead to firms being able to expand production, decreasing the cost of production, decreasing prices, and increasing demand for the firm's products. Lastly for question 4, Part D. Discuss whether or not maximum prices are beneficial. Remember to include both sides of the argument. Why maximum prices will be beneficial. More affordable products. More choices for consumers less poverty, to prevent exploitation of consumers by producers, especially monopolies, firms forced to become more efficient to be able to make a profit. Why maximum prices will not be beneficial, producers will not want to supply that much, firms leave the market, could lead to shortage, black market creation, less choices for consumers. Lastly for today, question 5. Let's start with part A. This again is a straight up definition. Market failure is when the market mechanism or price mechanism of demand and supply does not lead to an efficient allocation of resources. Next, question five, part B. Explain two influences, other than weather, that could affect the demand for a product. Pick any two of these. Price of substitutes. If the price of substitutes increases, demand for the product will increase or vice versa. Price of complements. 
If the price of complements increases, demand for the product will decrease or vice versa. Expected future prices. If the price is expected to increase in the future, demand for the product will increase now. Advertising. If there is a successful advertising campaign, demand will increase. Income. If income increases, demand will increase for a normal good or vice versa. Change in price. If price increases, demand will contract. Now, question 5. Part C. Analyze the possible effects of a shortage of a product such as energy on an economy. Low supply could lead to high prices and increased costs of production for firms. Cost push inflation means that firms might try to cut costs by firing workers which will increase unemployment. Increased price of goods and services decrease affordability, decreasing demand for goods and services, decreasing standards of living. More imports may be required to address shortages, which may mean less production, leading to a lower growth rate. Lastly, question 5. Part D. Discuss whether or not workers benefit from the division of labor. Remember both sides of the argument. Why it is a benefit. Saves time. Increased skills. Increased productivity. Increased wages. Why it is not a benefit. Increased boredom. Limited skills. Lack of motivation. Lack of occupational mobility. Overdependence on others. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.